Oh, okay, great. Oh, I see you, Meryl. Mean, oh, you're signing in. Okay, we're good. Okay. Okay, thanks. Bye. All right, we're both here. Hooray. Hey. <laughs> um, so I have some stuff I need to do to get ready. Okay, so. I'm, I'm just, I'm here. I have the agenda in front of me, so. Wonderful. All right, I'm going to just, I'm going to turn off my video. It looks like we have somebody named Molly Keegan's. I see that. I admitted her. Great. Um, okay, I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, great. Thanks, Meryl. Okay. Yeah. We're going to go get the dogs. see any hmm. three people entered the waiting room hold on
Oh, good. There's Jim. Look at us all in our Cape Cod houses. <laughs> <laughs> So we have two minutes before we start, but we need, I think I'm going to um, turn off my video and mute myself and call some of the other members and make sure people are coming on. Um, I'll be back. Okay, thanks, Meryl. Hey, Jim. Hi, Gordon. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Hello, Stephen. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Well, thanks. Good, thanks. Uh, right. subject. Yeah. For someone who is not that computer literate, I've kind of gotten down hosting this meeting. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed hey. you have. Hey, Luke. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Luke. Hi. I'm showing up as Molly Keegan's. I'm on my daughter's computer. But <laughs> it's me. You don't look like a Molly. Uh, <laughs> How is Molly? Good? <laughs> She's good. Good. Um, so welcome, everybody. It is Wait, Susan is now just five o'clock. Oh, good. Susan's here. Great. And I'm realizing we have a quorum, and so we can get started. Hi, Susan. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Hi. Thank Hi, you. Susan. Hi. Um, okay. We do have, let's see, Evelyn Lake is, isn't able to be with us tonight because um, she's in New York for a meeting. And um, so I think we should get started. Okay. Um, and um, let's start with introductions. Um, I'm Meryl Mead Fox, and I'm co-chair of the Historical Commission. I'm Gordon Kahn, I'm the other co-chair. Um, I'm Susan Baker, I'm a new member of the Historical Commission. Jim McAuliffe, I'm a commissioner. Luke Manning, commissioner. Great. Um, and um, we're starting off, oh, and I should I mention actually we have a new member um, Matt Gatch, who will be joining us next month. He was just approved by the select board last week, which is great news. Um, and we are starting with my neighbors, Elaine McElroy and Stephen Russell. <laughs> nice to see you. you as well, man. Um, so Gordon has um, the designs that you submitted. I think you're doing what many people in Wellfleet are wanting to do now <laughs> have a screen porch and deal with the mosquitoes and socializing during covid indeed so i've pulled up the site plan which was the first portion of your submission uh -huh. um and i believe that the proposed addition is shown in purple here exactly uh, we're hoping it'll be squarer than that okay <laughs> this is the proposed plan, which shows it eight feet by 13 feet. Right. And then you provided us with a narrative. We did. Thank you for that. Sure. Perhaps you could give us the highlights of the narrative and then I can pull up the photographs. 
Uh, okay. Um, Go ahead, storyteller. Our, our proposal is to create an eight foot by 13 foot uh, screened in porch on what is historically the front of our house, the house that faces the south and faces the, the harbor. Uh, our house was moved to this site in 1856. We're not sure of its exact uh, date of construction because uh, records prior to the move are, are non-existent. Uh, and we were told by uh, George Bryant. George Bryant of, of Provincetown when we bought the house in 1986 that he thought our house was, a, was originally a cape and then the material was reused to build something more in the in the prevailing style of the 1850s uh, uh, a Greek revival um, we're uh, looking to put this on uh, the south side of the house because that's the house the, the side that gets the most light and is the gives us a nice view if we do it um, there have been many additions to our house over the years so um, its historical nature we feel is more in the people who have lived here than, than in any actual uh, uh, construction that remains having said that it is an old house too so yeah you know, and it's certainly certainly in its massing and in the detail that we see it make ref makes reference to architecture from that era mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yeah yeah yep um the screen porch looks nice to me thank you um i think it's certainly not too large it's not overpowering the house the proportion seems right um we were going for Gordon. <laughs> the three part screening is always nice to have a space in the center. If you had four parts, you'd have a pole in the center, which is not as attractive. Right. So that's that's also very nice. Um, using the uh, material siding that's on the rest of the house, I believe, underneath the screen panels also makes a lot of sense to me. I prefer personally prefer the uh, version on the left of the screen. Than, than the one on the right. And that's um, what we've decided on too, should this project be approved. We're, we, had, we had thought we wanted the railing uh, look, uh, but we're, we've decided against that now and have, have dis, uh, gone for the shingled knee wall. Which, yeah, looking at it from the side view or the, or the angle here, I think, I think it looks okay with the rail, but I think it looks better without the rail. Uh, that's what we've decided as well. The exposed rafter tails are a nice detail. Mm -hmm. um, and the pitch looks like what it should be. Maybe it's about two and a half or three and 12. Is that what you've got there? I think so, yeah. I would imagine it's governed by this distance here exactly. and by this height right here. Right. I'm just curious about um, why it's different on the left and the right in the roof. We, we, Looks we had a couple of different designs. We asked uh, Patrick Woodbury, who did this uh, amazing photoshopping yeah, it's great. <laughs> design work. Um, we had asked him for several iterations, and we've chosen the knee wall one, but, but the way he sent them to us, we couldn't eliminate the other pictures. The simple, I think the simpler detail really is more successful. I think you made the right choice. All of this stuff up here is not bad, but sometimes when you're adding onto an old house, cleaner is better as it's not sort of competing with what's here. Yeah. Um, it's not distracting. Um, and the, even though the screen starts higher off the ground, the clearer view through the screen without the horizontal member at this level here which probably is right about at eye level when you're sitting in a chair looking out, mm. is nicer. Yeah. Agreed. I think aesthetically speaking, I, I think the, the three-quarter screen is fits better with the structure of the house and the 
jingle you can't tell which it is. I think it looks really nice. the left view. Yeah, the left left view in in this pair of photos and again in this pair of photos. Yes. You know, we don't need this, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any comments besides the three of us? There's a door into the main house behind the, the screens there on the screen porch. Yes. Yeah. And that's that's the, uh, if you're not changing the door, the, there's probably a window too. Uh, no, we're not changing any doors or windows at all on the, on the house itself. Yeah. We're just tacking on already there. The, well, the door, that currently is the kitchen door that will be the door to go out to the porch and then the two windows in the dining room are almost directly behind the two screen panels there no, and we're not changing any of that the door is sort of over here somewhere and the windows are here and here yeah the door is the on the on the far left as you're looking at the there you are and then the two and then there's a window behind each of those panels Okay, so it sounds like we're all um, in agreement that this is a good plan. So I would like to make a motion to accept this proposal as presented. I second that motion. And um, let's go through and vote. I vote aye. Gordon, aye. Susan, aye. aye. Sorry. No, that's okay. We must get in alphabetical order, guys. We're bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> What a good idea. Luke, okay. Okay. And that's for the three quarter screen version. Yes, exactly. Yeah. On the left hand yeah. side. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Elaine and Stephen. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy your screen porch. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Okay. Bye bye. Good night. Give me a moment to move to our next. <laughs> So the next item on the agenda is um, Sharon Rule Agar and David Agar, and it's um, um, an 1815 main house with windows being renovated and then a 1920 cottage with window replacement, um, trim replacement and reshingling where needed. And then a barn and shed removal of lead painted shingles, shutters and some clabbered. Um, Pardon me for a moment while my, this, this submission was sent to me in Word format, and so there it is. I just had to open Word. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so, um, sorry, did you want to start, Gordon? Um, I just wanted to say that this application, there are really two different things that we're talking about. One is replacing the windows on the main house, which is a prominent, beautiful house, um, and the other has to do with cottages in the back. Um, so can, I just, can I just say, we're not replacing any windows on the main house. They've been taken out for renovation and that's what, I, that's what I meant, Sharon, that I know yeah, that you're, okay. and we've done this before with other properties too, to, okay. to take the existing windows, to have them basically deleaded and restored and then reinstalled. Yes. Which is a wonderful approach. We appreciate that. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Um, and then um, as we move forward, I'm going to pull up these photographs and, and maybe Sharon or David, you could tell us what's going on here. Okay, so the cottage, um, <clears throat> as far as we know, so the, the Limas were the people, the people who sold this property to us and they have not, they used the cottage as summer housing for their, their staff. Um, as they bought the property in 1990, around there, and the cottage was already there on site. Um, they were told it was moved there. They don't really know much about it. They created an addition to it and uh, replaced all the windows at that time. And, but that was, you know, so Anderson windows, 30 years, their shot, mm -hmm. not to mention that it hasn't been occupied for about 15 years and um, the rodents have had their way. Mm -hmm. So um, our plan 
is to, and you're looking at the most boring side. I think I have other sides of it that you, anyway, it's, it's very interesting little. Wait, as I, as I come down, is this other, are these? No, the, that's, the no that's the barn. There's the cottage that, so it's a, that's it on a sort of on the entry side. And yeah. um, so our plan is to basically gut the interior, which only means when we've already done that, we've taken down the drywall and removed the disgusting insulation that was in there. And um, we have a carpenter who's coming on board probably next week, we think. Um, uh, Nick Watkins, I think he was a previous member of your commission. And um, our goal is to make it good, make it winterized, create a year round accessory dwelling unit um, it, so long as the attorney general approves that new bylaw. Uh, and so mm -hmm. that's, that's the work we're doing on that. The windows will be the same. There's one window in the very top of this, right, right up there. That actually was just an opening. So we may put something different in there, but that would be, it wouldn't change the look of the place. And um, the rest of the windows, are on the lower level are all will be Anderson 400s and on the loft area well storage area um is that here? I'm renovating the no that's the barn oh, that's the barn I'm sorry is there any uh you know I thought I had another another picture of it but look I'm sorry if I didn't um no, yes I do. Right. I, I, I do I do I have the cottage south which is Somehow it got they got turned around in yours. If you keep going down, um, there no, keep going. Where'd it go? It's on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's, okay. um, it's perfectly all right. Perhaps yeah. you can describe it to us. So anyway, there there was a set of three uh, mm -hmm. windows that were probably installed in the seventies that were in bad shape, but pretty. So I have been renovating those and we'll reinstall them with proper storms and all that kind of stuff. So that's the project on that. Um, and when, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I might've missed it. When was the cottage originally constructed, do you suspect? So far as we know, and according to the assessor's information, we have not done a lot of research. Uh, according to the assessor's information, it was from 1920. 1920. Mm-hmm. And it looks to be a simple sort of, I guess I would call it Cape style with. A... <laughs> well, it's idiosyncratic in my opinion, but. Uh, but I mean, it's sort of, you know, that's. That the, part looks Capey, yes. Yeah, it has that. I mean, the proportions of it and the materials yeah. do. And so it's 400 be... square feet. It's not anything. Yeah. Will, you be re will you be resigning it? Yes. Yeah, they're on, on the airs, on the parts where the um, addition was made in the 90s. Most of those shingles are in good shape. So we probably won't reside them, but in the rest of the building, um, it, they definitely need it. And some of the trim is rotted, so that will be replaced as well. And you'll be replacing it, I assume, with materials that match those which exist today. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And the trim dimensionally will match and it will be wood? Yeah, yep. Okay. And the light cut configurations, I mean, here, this looks like six over six. And here, uh, I, I guess they're think, six uh, over six. You know what, the windows are on order. I think they're six over six, but it's a, you know, the, it'll be a, a just a, a grill. Right. Because they're double pane, so. Uh, and what about the roof? The roof is in good shape. We're okay. not touching it. And then will this be replaced with a louver of some sort? Um, that um, they have in the barn a, a, a funky kind of octagonal <laughs> shaped window. We were actually going to take that window out, but mm -hmm. um, it does contribute a light and the cottage is somewhat dark. So um, I was thinking, of, I might try this octagonal window in there. It would fit. Okay. Um, otherwise, it would just be like a plain piece of glass. And then, and then, what is this? Yeah, 
that's a little casement window. And so what's when it, they, what's its when they did this, when they did the remodeling in the nineties, they were not, you know, paying attention to any historic mm -hmm. elements. Uh -huh. And what is the future of this casement window? Um, that will be, uh, uh, that Nick is, we've ordered a, a window for that. And I don't know <coughs> whether it's got light or not. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> You know, and then what's the future of this uh, rail? Lovely deck. <laughs> it needs a little bit of it needs a little bit of work. Obviously, it's not original. Uh, the Lima's built that, but it is functional, and uh, it may be in the future that that we would come back with a request to enlarge it a little bit because right now it's really only useful for walking in and out, but. If it was expanded a little bit out to the corner there, it could make a nice little place to sit. Yeah. Okay. So under materials, I see that um, you say replacement trim will be new wood, except that cellular PVC trim may be used in places where moisture is co a concern. That's primarily on the porch area. Uh-huh. Because of the way the water drains and, and hits the deck then the wood there has rotted. So um, probably that PPC um, would be a better choice in that location. Uh-huh, okay. So does, does anybody have any more questions? A question about the front of the barn where that casement window, window is in the front. Is there a... Um, a companion, a matching casement window, window behind that bush on the other side of it? Uh, there is a matching uh, casement window on all the way across. East side. On okay. the east. Yeah. Right, on, on the, the other side. Of, yeah, on the other side, the yeah. 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 And that will be replaced as well. Okay. <clears throat> That's an interesting question. And, you know, it's anybody's guess what's original here. I think most of this L to the left uh, is that's the addition that the Lima's put on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the nineties. But I mean, all that, I mean, this simple, I mean. Yeah. It's simple, which mm -hmm. is a good thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd like to say that I really appreciate the fact that you're um, taking care of the windows and um, that you're replacing like with like, and um, that the use of the PVC trim is limited, but practical. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and then here's the barn. <laughs> the barn. So um, yeah, the, the shingles and the shutter on this left window that you're seeing that elevation, um, they all have lead paint. And I have a moderate um, homeowner lead paint abatement authorization. So I will be removing those because there will be children living here. Right. Um, the future of the barn is uncertain at this point. It's, I mean, it's a charming structure. It's not original because it has insulation for crying out loud, but uh, I mean, it's rodent infested, but it's there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so structurally, you know, it's anybody's guess what's happening underneath <laughs> on the soil level. There, there's a few bricks around that make it look like there might be some sort of foundation, but not all the way around. So, Sharon, for, so the purpose, for the purpose of the application that you've submitted yeah. for our review today, yeah. the work at the barn is to simply remove the um, lead contaminated yes. portions of the building. Components. Where, Two shutters exactly. and this window? Well, and then on this side here where the tarp is hanging down, there's mm -hmm. clabberding that is not that side, but on this left image where the tarp is coming down. Oh, here. Yeah, that's covering um, clabbered that is also lead painted. And what will you do to that as a part of this application? It, we will be removing it and discarding it. We will not be replacing it until the future of the barn is made is more clear, which mm -hmm. that is um, a structural, you know, we need, we need more advice on that. 
Um, we'd like to keep it. We definitely would like to keep it, but we also, um, you know, if it's unsafe or cost prohibitive, then uh, we would certainly come back to this committee before we did anything else with it. But because uh, you know, um, we, we would always encourage you to try to keep as much of it as you can that is safe and 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 reasonable in all ways, you know. And if it comes to a point where you're talking about removing it, you know, we'd love to meet you there. And absolutely and see and see what we're actually talking about in I would, terms of its historic value i would welcome any of you to come visit it uh anytime uh i mean whether we're on the property or not um mm -hmm. are you here in wellfleet now sharon oh yes we're here in wellfleet yeah and um you know if anybody has any ideas for us on <laughs> <laughs> where we could get some grants or what you know whether or not it's salvageable i mean we, we uh we're pretty handy but this is way above our skill set yeah i do know it depends i mean i think if you could do some research into the age of the barn um you mentioned before you hadn't done tons of research because you, there are grants available for renovations minor grants for historic properties depending on you know their age and their circumstances so mm -hmm. you know, if you could find something there might, that might be something that... that's a great idea yeah. um it, it might be a little bit down the road though because we're dealing with quite a bit of deferred maintenance on uh both the cottage and the main house right yeah. main house is lovely by the way it will be <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I would, you know, I'd be delighted to, I'd be delighted to meet you there when it's convenient for you. Maybe another sure. member would like to, would like to join me. Um, if someone we'll else will be there wants. working on Friday again. Oh yeah, I would, I'm, I can, I can certainly stop by on Friday and I'd welcome anybody who'd like to join me. I'd come yeah, by. I'll, just, yeah, I, I'll stop by. Yeah. Okay. You have like an idea of a time? Does 10, does 10 o'clock work, Luke? Does that Perfect work for you? Perfect for me, but. Uh, um, no, I, I, I'm going to be in Provincetown most of the day, but um, oh. it, you know, if I have I can to come by at a, at, a, at a later, later hour, that's fine. And you're certainly welcome. My son's going off to Skidmore and I have to take him to the Cape Cod Mall on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so, very important. <laughs> very important. My alma mater, us, by the way. Is ah. it? Yeah. So I'd like <laughs> a to, long time ago. <laughs> I'd like to, I'd like to go in the morning. I could even go as early as nine o'clock. Uh, sure, I can go at nine if you want. Sharon yeah. and David, does that work for that you? That works for me. I'm sure Nick has a pretty good idea of what's going on with the barn. Also, um, you know, you're... yeah, he he walked in it and his eyes lit up. Yeah, <laughs> not 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 good lit up. No, <laughs> no, like he's like, wow, this is so cool. But you know, yeah. anybody who walks in there acknowledges the poor condition that it's in. Yeah. I'm sure it is. Be, be think, interesting to take a look. I think the yeah, improvements absolutely. on the the improvements on the, the cottage are needed, and I don't think it's a uh, you know real historically significant building. But um, and obviously having more options for year round housing, everybody's for that, and it's needed. Um, you you don't have a window schedule for us to look at a proposed window schedule, or you? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I needed to. Um, that Nick has ordered them. Um, so I guess I must have something somewhere. Um, I do in my papers. And as a matter of fact, I have, you know, what Shepley gave him. Um, if you want, I can scan it in and send it off they to you. Be here last week. Hmm? They should be here last week. The windows, the windows, the windows were supposed to be here last week. <laughs> <laughs> and the checks in the mail. So, um, but they're just the Anderson 400s. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want, I can I can scan that in and send it to you. I I was just curious if they were the same same style or um, I mean I it doesn't I would hate to you know have it hinder you being able to move forward. But typically we'll review that in the meeting before we. Uh, uh huh. Hold on it. Um, let me just look. Hold on, David. Hold on. Um, Sharon's looking for that paperwork. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Yeah. 
it may be neither here nor there, but we already have building permits for both the main house and for the windows in the cottage. Well, right. then, then in that case, there's, there's really no need for you to come in front of us. I mean, it's already <laughs> permitted. But we appreciate um, you. We, we just wanted to give it. It's, it's uh, 400 coming. series, off-white interior, applied exterior, removable interior grill is what they say, full screen, white trim. Mm -hmm. um, and and then the two casements are also casements and they're six over six. They are six. The, the, yeah. the six over six. That's is the yeah, case the, divided at all or is the it the grill? I mean it's not truly divided, it's a it's double right. pane. So it's Simulate. just a Simulate. grill. Right. It has the six over six grill. Yeah. And the casement windows are not divided. They're just no, they're, they're, they're just what they are now. Okay. And Luke, we, we knew that, but we just thought that that the property was significant enough that that you would probably want to be aware of what we were doing, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, we I we always appreciate it. Um, but typically, the building inspector would re request that you come in front of us prior to issuing a permit. Well, as you know, we're sort of between building inspectors. <laughs> yeah. So we 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 put our permit. I mean, our request for a permit in in like June twenty fourth. Um, and we just got that. our permit only because we um, sort of weakly called the uh, interim town administrator. Yeah. So um, I think Sharon, you know, on, many, on many levels, Sharon, I think we're all between many different things here in Wellfleet. Yes. And we, as the historic commission, are holding our heads high and appreciate you coming before us. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, Good. we don't need to vote on this, but we do appreciate your keeping us informed. And we look forward to hearing about the decisions about the barn and giving input about that. OK. Can't wait, can't wait to see it on Friday morning. I'm and you're going to come Friday at 9. And yep. whoever wants to come, that's great. Or, or any time, yeah. you know. Just, you know, it's wealthy. The doors are unlocked. So, uh, all right, thanks. <laughs> it, it, okay, I, I'd stop by at some point. Thank you. You bet. Okay, thanks thank so much. You. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks bye -bye. for having us. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Okay, um, so we have covered. Um, okay, Kitty, Ryan, and Joseph Alelli, are they here as well? Yep, we're here. Oh, good. Hi, welcome hey, back. Hey, you guys. Hi. We're back. We're back. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming back. Wow. Maybe, maybe you could just, as I go through the elevations, just let us know what is slightly different so sure. we make sure that it's good. So, so looking at this elevation here specifically. Yep. Um, the, the changes are that the previously the, the casement windows were full height, about seven feet, and they're now. Uh, uh, a, a tall casement, it's about five, six over a fixed um, unit. Um, These being the fixed units. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's the same on the studio as well. Yes, I see. Yeah, nothing on that one. And here we same, have the same thing there. Yep. And these are awning windows or they're fixed, you said? But they're fixed as well. And was it that? that it was impossible to find a, uh, a full height operable casement or well, it, it, this aesthetic? Yeah, no, it wasn't impossible. It's, it's that um, when we were working through trying to figure out, you know, contractor and, and pricing, we found that the full height casements that we wanted to use were, were really um, beyond our affordability level. Mm -hmm. So we tried to find uh, windows that we we like that were good windows. Um, we're proposing uh, Marvin windows okay. and the Central series. Um, the are, they, they are they clad on the outside or are they uh, painted on the they're, outside? They're fiberglass. Fiberglass on the outside and wood on the inside. No, they're fiberglass all the way through. Fiberglass all the way through. Yeah, I see. So the only change is the addition of the the fixed exactly. windows here. That's right. And then on that elevation, the one you were just on, we wanted to add a, a horizontal um, on it. Which window was I just on? So this one here. Here you are. So the the furthest right is an addition. That's a that's a, a window. 
are proposing? I'm just, I'm just, I'm asking this, and I'm not telling you to do it, but I wonder, because you have developed this rhythm of almost transom style windows, mm -hmm. had you considered cutting the windows here and having them go full height down below hmm. to create this kind of continuous horizontal line hmm. that you'd pick up from space to space. That's here interesting. Too, you have these, you have these yeah. windows that are up high. And I wonder if yeah. the window were divided here, yeah. it would help the composition tie together in a better way. No, I hadn't, hadn't thought of that. There's something about the tall piece on top that I don't know, made it feel like it's more open, but, and we kind of evaluated the horizontal, mm -hmm. you know, so that when you're sitting, it's not in your field of view either. And it, and it's also because of the, the, um, the operating crank for the casement, you'd be down at the floor, I think, trying to open it up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I just think that one of the things that ties a house together is that datum that's established by a window head height. Sure. Yep. Um, those are those are kind of a those little square windows to me are really different from what's happening in the in the sun porch. You know, it's it's a very typical kind of thing to have a transom for sure. But um, I think there's something about the the verticality starting at the head mm -hmm. and going down that um, I, I prefer. Okay. And then the other addition to from the last submission is that we are um, proposing solar panels on the south um, part of the roof, which you'd see in those smaller images there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's a great thing to do. Yeah, great idea. Thank you. I I would only say that if I were if I were to designing it or if it were my house, I would do a sketch taking a look at possibly dividing the casement window, possibly adding transoms here in such a way that it picks up the rhythm that's established by the other high windows. Mm -hmm. But by no means am I saying that you have to do that. It's a okay. personal, a personal choice. Okay. So to say how stunning this design is really gorgeous. You must be so excited. Oh, we are beyond excited. It's taken us a long time. We first looked at the house um, a year ago. Yes. Um, and so it's just finally getting to a point where, where we can start something. So it's, that's very exciting. Yeah. It's yeah. very exciting. And we're also glad that you're doing it. And, thank and you. thank you so much for working with us oh. and asking us and even coming back for this. We really appreciate that. And we really appreciate being a part of the process with you. Thank you. Well, you have Thanks. good ideas. You've, you've given us good ideas, so we. <laughs> you know, my, as you know, modernism is close to my heart, and I yeah. and yeah. a lot of what I design is modernist. And I grew up in a house that was designed by one of Frank Lloyd Wright's students in Usonia in exciting. Westchester. Exciting! Wow. So I think the whole notion of the of the colony and the Americanization of the international style, kind of in the Neutra vein is something that I've always been very attracted to and that I'm very concerned about preserving. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be interesting, you know, as, as time goes on, what the other build, what will happen with the other buildings, you know? And, yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's a little bit daunting. So is this property part of the colony? Yes. yes. Although oh, no kidding, okay. It's a separate um, parcel. Right, okay. And I do appreciate you hearing me out when I talked about proportions and, and yeah. And the, and the long, low hugging things and, you know, talking about this height, we, we spent a lot of time working together on it and, yeah. and, 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 and you, you guys have been terrific and collaborative. So thank you. Thank you, Gordon. Um, I move that the uh, minor changes to the originally approved submission be approved. I second, second the motion. Oh, well, our mayor seconds second the motion. That's all right. <laughs> Is that typical? Do you always second the motion? I don't wanna. No, it's not typical, and you're allowed to second. Okay. Go right ahead. <laughs> um, and I, Meryl, vote aye. Gordon, aye. Susan, aye. Luke, aye. Jim, aye. Thank you all so much. You're very Thank welcome. You. Good luck. Good to it. see you again. You too. Yeah. Thank you. Have, have fun people. with it. <laughs> we will. Thanks. We will. <laughs> Bye. Take care.
Take care. Thanks. You too. That was good. Yeah. Have you guys, so Marilyn, I touched on this, but have you thought of um, creating town historic districts that would protect the modern homes in town? Not just the modern ones, but in general, we don't have a historic district the way Provincetown does and the way many other neighboring towns do right. in towns on the Cape. And if you can get it past the town meeting, we would really like to have that because it would help empower us not to be difficult, but just to help preserve things. I mean, absolutely. I, I mean, absolutely. that's really what it boils down to. You know, somebody could buy one of those colony cottages and add a second story to it and paint it bright white and and or, and do something to it. And it would completely, completely impact the way that as a whole ties together and really does represent one of the rare examples in the Northeast of the Americanization absolutely. of the international style. It's absolutely. Really it's important. I mean, there's one Neutra house in Connecticut. Is it a significant property? It's important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we want, I, we I, have I, not. I been agree. Touch. Yeah. Have we tried to do that? Um, yes. Um, it, it, apparently, um, when um, I, I, I don't know the names of all these people, you people do who've been around here longer, but originally um, the mother of the current owner um, was Eleanor. talked to about this. Eleanor. 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 Eleanor and and, Kanky, and yeah. um, she apparently, I forget why, but she had concerns about creating a historic district and so didn't and then started selling off. They have started selling off these different mm -hmm. parcels. Probably why she didn't want to have a historic district. Yeah, I think so, because it puts limits on what people are able to do. I mean, Usonia fought and fought and fought against uh, against being on the National Register. And then finally, there came a time when they applied for it, and it is now on the National Register. Right. You know, we could think about um, the two of you, Gordon and Susan, since you have the most experience with this going and talking with the current owners to I'll see what they're going to do. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk to Jeff about it. I mean, we could approach him. They're here. I noticed. I drive out there and I see he's got that car with Virginia plates in the in the front there. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, I I don't know him. I mean, I used to know him when I was a kid, but um, yeah. I'd be happy. I'd be I'd be happy to talk to him because I do think I know that towns like Ipswich, Mass, for instance, have a program where, and I don't know if we've ever tried to institute this, where where um, homeowners can voluntarily submit an application to be under some historic restriction, under some restrictions so that they can't change, they can limit the changes to the interior and exterior. Um, and then they get like a sign on their house or something, historic sign on their house. But um, is that any, and I don't know what the terminology is for that. I'd have to talk to people in have switch, but is that something that has ever been broached to? Not, not, not that I know of. Well, it may, yeah, I know. we weren't here at the time that all of that was going on, but um, I do know that there are preservation easements. Um, and Sarah Korchev, um, who I mentioned to you, who's on the Cape Cod Commission and their right. preservation specialist, is very good to talk to about the various options. And I, I do, I have talked to her about it, and I have notes um, from my conversation. So we, the three of us, could also talk about what I've learned, or you could talk to her directly. Yeah, I'm happy to reach out to her. I'm just, I'm curious what, the, it'd be nice to have a, a series of options for homeowners and property owners if they were interested in, that we could also promote if we wanted to, um, that are different levels of kind of preservation um, restrictions on a home, or if it's just exterior, if it's in an historic district and it's exterior, or if it's more than that, if it's an important structure mm -hmm. in and of itself that needs to be, if we can, you know, preserved just for building methods and materials and things like that but as a, I'll look at, I can I'll talk to Ipswich too and see what they do yeah what are they okay you know, great I have to just say that you know speaking about the colony just for a moment you know I get this twinge that's that he's gonna you know find it more economically feasible to sell off more and more of these things uh, and find some way to do it without a restriction and without guidance yeah. Yeah, and so it's a good that, time for us to think about this and try to approach it. But I think we probably do need to do our research and have all of our eggs in a row about what the options are before you go talk to him. And convince him that that it wouldn't be a detriment to the sale of the properties that people would be interested in acquiring them because of the nature of the That's coherent right. hall. 
That's right. Yeah, because the colony, it's as a community, could be preserved. Yeah. Already, it's begun to change. I mean, you mentioned a, a building being bought and painted white, and that's what happened to the building next to Kitty and Joe's, right? Yes, it was acquired and it's painted white. And yeah. I asked Kitty what color they were going to paint it, and she said she was thinking gray <laughs> or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, anyway, it's we should get on with our agenda because okay, okay, but that's we have stuff to do. But maybe Carol, you could. There's Susan, you could spearhead that maybe. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a little research. I'll talk to the women at Cape Cod Commission and try and, and come up with some options and I'll let you know what I find. Wonderful. Yeah. I, can, uh, I can also get my notes together for you about that. Okay. Um, so Susan Baker, Colony. Okay. Um, all right. Sorry, I'm turning over my agenda. <laughs> um, all right, so under um, community preservation, we have a whole lot of different things coming up. One is that um, I, I had mentioned last time, I think that Lynn Smilage um, has um, agreed to do a Zoom presentation on our behalf. And we had hoped to do it on the 20th or the 21st, but um, in the process of my looking into various options, I spoke with Cheryl Jaffe at the Historical Society Museum and um, the good news is that they are willing to help us advertise this through their um, newsletter that goes out to, I think, 600 people, which is lovely. And she also told me that, um, uh, um, oh gosh, that the, the library has been doing the Zoom presentations for them, Jennifer Wordkin. And so I contacted Jennifer and she's willing to do it, but she's not available on those two dates. So she um, could do it on the 25th of October. And I'm just wondering if anybody else is able to be available then. The 25th of October. Yeah. I partly yes, that's me. fine. That's fine. fine with me. Great. Fine with me too. Great. Okay. And fine with me. Um, okay. That's wonderful. So I think we will plan to do it then. Um, and uh, I spoke with Eveline about helping out with PR for this. And um, she and Jim and I are going to work on that. Um, and and let's, so, and Jim, um, I was thinking that we probably need to decide on what the budget for her presentation and the PR would be. Um, we haven't done a workshop since I've been on the Historical Commission, so I'm not sure how it's usually done, but do you have a sense from your work with the CPC about whether we need to make a decision as a group about the budget? Uh, there is a, a set aside in the 2019 grant uh, for workshops, which is totally unspent, and it's uh, $1,000 that remains. Uh -huh. so I'm not sure of the, uh, I'm, I'm in touch with Mary Rogers as to the appropriate way to uh, secure that and account for it. Um, okay. But it's no, it, it has been designated for workshops. So I assume it would be presenter and all the associated expenses, including the publicity. Okay. Um, I don't think we'll need that much, which is great. <laughs> right. Um, right. I'm, I'm hoping that we might be able to do two presentations or workshops this year. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that um, Cheryl Jaffe and I spoke about was um, I was saying that I th thought it would be really interesting to do something about um, L.D. Baker and um, his association with so many of the various buildings in town. And um, she said that they are actually thinking about doing a, a workshop, not a workshop, doing an L.D. Baker birthday celebration in yeah. March. Yeah. And having it be all focused on bananas. <laughs> We're planning on having chefs do demonstrations of banana flambe and whatever. So we talked about maybe collaborating where we do um, the information about sort of the historical um, story and um, where they do the fun stuff. And um, but we all sort of do it together in some way. Um, 
Sounds and great. <laughs> I'm glad you approve, especially since you're a relative. <laughs> uh, you know, it's always interesting and I always learn stuff. So it's fun. Um, I have a question about the, the budget though. So I'm involved in a big conference in Salem right now. And we have a lot of people from all over the country coming in, none of whom have asked to be paid. Um, and so we're not paying them. So okay. I don't know if we need to offer um, money or we just give an honorarium to the speaker um, without committing ourselves. But um, I think people are willing to talk and they don't mind doing things gratis many times. That's just oh. a side thing. And, and also if the, um, if, will we be advertising and doing PR beyond what the historical society will do for us? Um, I hope so. The, the newspapers are fairly pricey, it turns out. And, and although I know the independent in the past has um, done a little tiny write up for us, but if we wanted to do something like a quarter page that has a picture, right? So what more it would, I think it's going to cost about 450 something like that. Hmm. So it's a fair amount of money. Okay. Um, you have your thoughts about that? You have more experience with this. Do you have thoughts about? Oh, um, I mean, I think this will be a virtual presentation. Mm -hmm. I think if we could, um, does the town have a have a mailing list that we could use beyond the historical society? Yeah, we can just mm -hmm. mail out an announcement. Um, both of those institutions could mail out an announcement that's covering a lot of people and we could do, we could ask a social media blurb, like we could, I mean, if you can, if you can have people post something on social media, it doesn't cost us anything. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know how effective the newspaper ad would be, for instance. Okay. Um, but it's funny cause I, the Newport, uh, not the Newport, the uh, Nantucket um, Preservation Society is having a big conference on rising sea level, and they, I've seen their ad in the Independent um, coming up. So I can talk to them after this and see how effective that was, if you want me to. Uh, and I can certainly really talk. To, and I can certainly talk to Casey and Ed about just putting something in about us. I was actually just with Casey on the porch talking about <laughs> the fact that we didn't have, we don't have a secretary, and that we're doing. She said, "You're kidding." You guys are not supported. And she went on and on and on about um, the various dilemmas that, that we're facing. But I'm sure if I were to ask her and Ed that they would give us as much as they could. Well, Teresa is actually the person to communicate with about it. Because um, I did go online with the independent and see, but you're, you're yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just. Yeah. <laughs> Don't your connections. Yeah. It would be better to have an article about us and about the event. Yes. It would be good to have that, gets, that gets more draw than, than an ad would. Yeah. I was talking, I, I, talking to Casey about our intention to be collaborative and to be helpful, and especially with people buying houses in town, how we've become, I think, really important. I don't want to say gatekeepers, but, you know, important helpers to new homeowners. Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, raise their awareness of the value of historic preservation and the value of their specific house. And how it can be done sensitively, but still done because houses evolve. Um, maybe I could talk to Casey more and see what I can get. Um, <laughs> yeah, so let's see, I wanted to say, so Jim has volunteered to put something out on the- um, Well, free uh, to community space. Yeah, yeah. so we yeah. would be getting- to free of there. charge. Yeah, yeah which and is reaches great. a lot of people. Yeah, and, and I will put something on the Instagram account that I'm doing for the Historical Commission, although I'm not sure, I'm, I'm frankly not sure how many of those people actually live in Wellfleet or they're people that like to visit here, but. That's um, okay, word spreads, you know, word spreads. And yeah. if it's a virtual presentation, you know, you can be anywhere and watch something. So if they're interested, they, would, they might watch. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, so, and Susan, I would love it if you wanted to be involved in PR. I, I, I was not mentioning you as a PR person because- No, I don't want to be involved in PR at okay, all. Okay, all right, fine. I mean, I'll do what I have to, but I, I would, I, that's not an area of expertise. It's just an area that, because I'm involved in this uh, organization, this large conference, and I, you know, and we all work for not-for-profits. We're always looking for a way to save money and spread the word without having to spend money. So um, yeah. that's just been yeah. my experience. 
That's great. Okay, thank you. But I'm happy to help if you have anything that you think okay. needs to be done. All right, thanks. Well, I don't ask me to post Instagram posts and like that. That that's I would be terrible at that. <laughs> okay, I'm bad at that too. Okay. Um, yeah, and I actually I enjoyed that. I've learned a lot about Wellfleet by doing the research, so it's been fun. Um, so let's see. I okay. There there are so many things on my mind. I'm sorry. I'm just kind of trying to keep. Okay, and the other, speaking of Susan Baker, the other wonderful thing is that Susan has agreed to be our secretary because Jim currently has been our secretary, our treasurer, and our CPC representative, and we're trying to free up some of his time. <laughs> so he is also thrilled that Susan- Gave a reaction. I saw that. <laughs> cool, I didn't know you could do that. I just learned. <laughs> Um, so we are very grateful to you, Susan, and um, Happy to do it. And Jim and Susan will yeah. talk about how and when to do that transition. Um, exactly. Right. I, sure. I yeah. sent Jim an email today, so yeah. we can connect about that. And we should thank you for that. Yes. Thank you. We'll do that. Sure. That's wonderful. And the other wonderful thing that Susan has offered to do for us is to organize the historic inventories, the form Bs that are on our Google Drive, so that. Um, we can more readily find things that we need to find there and ideally so that eventually it can be a resource for the community because the Mass Historical Commission is a year and a half behind in posting our new inventories online on the MACRIS database. Um, so that's gonna be a wonderful service and I'm so grateful to you for doing that. Happy to do it. I, it might take me a while, but I, I, I'd love to pull you guys because when Meryl and I were talking about that, we discussed that, you know, how to kind of structure that. And she sent me the list of the, all the streets in town, all the streets and all the, all the houses on the streets. So yeah. I was going to do it kind of by street and then just have, just follow that format and just kind of organize the form B's under that street name. That sounds really um, in order. Find. Right now I can never find anything. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I'm going to try and do, and we'll see how it goes. You know, it's going to take me a while. I'm super busy at work, so it's going to take me a while to get that done, but I'll start, I'll begin soon. That's fine. Just the fact that you're doing it at all is wonderful, and, and it will be very useful for these meetings because then we can more readily pull up the, you know, the most recent sure. historic inventory for these um, when people come before us. Right, right. Our meetings, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so that's that. Um, oh, and then Lynn needs a new contract. Um, Jim, can you update us about what's happening with that? This is Lynn Smilage, sorry. Yes, well, I'm working with Mary Rogers uh, on that uh, Great. currently, but uh, it appears um, given our uh, recently extended and repurposed uh, 2018 CPA grants and the 2019 uh, grant, we have about $6,239 in aggregate uh, that could be devoted to underwriting uh, the, uh, the 24, 28 maybe uh, more form B building inventory forms over the course of the next year. Great, okay, that's wonderful. So we'll all wanna be thinking about what the priorities would be. They, the priorities were kind of established on that historic inventory survey that I sent to you, Susan, um, okay. but I'm sure there are more than 28 on there that could be redone. So, you know, we all might want to take a look at that and right. see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I realized, Jim, after we talked that I actually have a copy of um, the contract that was signed about Lynn oh, earlier. That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I, the trouble is I don't have a digital form of it, but maybe I can get you the paper form. We can communicate about that offline. Sure. sure. Um, Okay, um, so that's, oh, so another issue is that um, in talking with both Jennifer Wirtkin and Cheryl Jaffe, I discovered that um, the, you know, the process that we have had is that we've had the new, for, all of the Form Bs are supposed to be stored at the Historical Society Museum and at the library. But with the pandemic, that whole process has kind of um, stopped. And ideally, these new historic inventories are supposed to be filed with 
you know, they're, they're basically file folders in the library. And the Historical Society Museum has been receiving the new forms digitally from Lynn, but um, they haven't done anything with them. And so I think we need, we need to sort out how to deal with this, because this is part of our responsibility is um, having these inventories be available for the public in some form. Um, and I think it would probably make sense to have them. I mean, if we can get our, if we can get them available on our website and then one other place in town that has paper copy that people could go and look at, um, I would think that would be more than adequate, but I don't know. Maybe we need more than that. Well, that would be a relief to, to yeah, yeah, to sort of let the Historical Society and Museum do their part and then we'll just do our part at the library and they can figure out their part. Yeah. Um, but I think it'd be great at some point once this has been organized and we feel like it's working is to figure out how to link that to our website or uh, to, the, to the Historical Commission's website so that right. people, people could find that online. Somewhere. Yeah, it would be so much easier than having to go to a building, especially for people that are non-resident taxpayers. And, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be one wonderful benefit of you doing what you're doing. One suggestion Lydia had made um, early on um, when we did this transition um, from, you know, her chairmanship to ours is um, she thought we should perhaps ask Lynn to photocopy each of the new copies that she's sending to Mass Historical Commission, and then we'll just have that photocopy and have that be a part of her job. So um, maybe, Jim, you could include, if that's okay with everybody, if you think that's a good mm -hmm. idea, include that in on her contract. Yes. So who would keep that photocopy? Would she or would? No, she would send us the photocopies and then we would file them at the library so that they're available at the library. Okay. And they, and, and she would send us a digital version for our records or did our. Yeah, which yeah. she does already. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. The, um, Cheryl Jaffe had asked if she could create a disc for them rather than sending them to her digital. I think of discs as being kind of passe. Am I wrong? Yeah, totally. Okay, thank you. That's, that's like, I'm not that's, savvy, so. <laughs> most people don't even have a disc reader on their laptops or anything anymore. So that's, that's a. Thank you, Susan, I thought that, so. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not the way to go. All right, good. <laughs> um, okay. So, oh, okay. And then another thing I'm realizing is that um, as I'm, um, moderating the meetings i'm not writing notes about our decisions and and the secretary is and so i'm wondering if whoever is serving as secretary for this meeting it would be jim and and in future meetings susan if if you could send me just a brief description of what each of the decisions was you don't have to send me all of the minutes but if you could do that for me quickly like the next day because I need to then send a note to Dari um, at, at the building department to let her know so that she can decide what she's doing about issuing building permits. Is that okay? Is that workable? Fine. Yeah, I'll try and get the, the minutes done the next day and just send you that so you can read okay. in there what the decisions are rather than have to send to. Okay. If I can. Okay, you don't you don't have to, but whatever. Yeah, no, I'll, <laughs> just so I'll I have get you that. But it would be great to get those done, and just uh, so I don't forget. And yeah, so it's done. Better if I do it right away. Okay, thank you. Great. Um, okay, and I had the colony on, but we already talked about that. And then um, when Susan and I spoke, she also talked about whether. Um, we had met with the building inspector and I talked about the fact that you and I had planned to do that earlier, Gordon, and then kind of put it off because the building inspector is temporary. But given what just happened about the building permit being issued before the, the aggers met with us, I'm thinking maybe we should try to do that earlier. I'd be delighted to. Casey told me when, on my porch discussion before our meeting that there is actually a new building inspector who's been hired, but he's in Maine. And it'll oh. be some time before he's able to actually start. Oh. But Casey seemed to think that they have hired somebody. Luke, have you heard anything about that? 
I don't, I, I know that they were working on it. I didn't know they had somebody for sure. Um, Richard Stevens has been filling in from Truro. He used to be our building inspector for a while. Yeah. But, um, and Derry has been issuing permits um, also, but not, not all the permits. Richard's been issuing some. Yeah. So, yeah. But well, in case you heard somewhere that, that there's somebody, but it's going to be a while before he starts. Well, that's great news. Better than there isn't anybody. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I think it makes sense for you guys to talk to the building inspector, the temporary one, even now, just to remind them about. Maybe, maybe take the approach that we really appreciate that David and Sharon Aggers came before us, but they weren't referred to us. And uh, we were just wondering, you know, what was the basis of that decision, you know, in a not, not a confrontational way, just trying to understand mm -hmm. what the process is, if there is any process. I could stop by his office. Um, we, we were, we bumped into each other and we were talking about catching up anyway. Um, so that'd be great. Yeah. I'm going to P town all week. So I could stop on my way in or, or out depending on the hour and catch him one of these days. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's great. I mean, he's, I wish he was our, our permanent building inspector. Um, but, but um, I can have a real casual conversation with him. We're, we're friendly. So. That would be oh, great. Cool. So it's not confrontational. Just great. Sort of That'd be wonderful. Right Thank you. Yeah. Do you have thoughts about um, how we could keep building inspectors better? Are there things we could do as a commission or the town could do to keep people? I, I think it's basically, a you know, every case is probably a little different, but, you know, it's, it's almost like that the whole lower Cape has musical building inspectors. And I think it's because they, uh, it's kind of a thankless job at the end of the day, somebody's going to be upset with you for something. And when the heat gets turned up too much, it's easier to move on because other towns are hiring mm. and, you know, I know that uh, Paul wanted to be closer to home and that makes sense, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, so I'm at a, at a loss how to hang on to somebody, but we've been lucky. We've had some really good ones and, and uh, I hope our luck continues, but it seems like the town does a pretty good job of screening and hiring, but um, you never know. There's a, there's a, there's been a, you know, we're, uh, I'll just say we're lucky we've had the guys we've had because um, there are some that aren't as easy to deal with. And, mm. and I don't just mean lax, just uh, trying to solve problems instead of create problems along the way. And mm. That's yeah. my experience anyway. Well, I yeah. hope that trend continues. Yeah. I think that one thing that we can do um, in our little world is to continue to express our appreciation to applicants and, and to people in the town mm -hmm. um, and in the village, the, the offices who are helpful to us and who participate with us. Yeah. I think, you know, you sit at the select meeting and you listen to it and it's very glum. Yes, it There's is. Not a lot of cheerfulness and not a lot of gratitude or appreciation for much of anything. Yeah. And why would anybody want to engage with it? I mean, it really is off putting. And so, you know, I try to be careful when I'm talking at a meeting to thank people for working mm -hmm. with us and for showing mm -hmm. up and for being a part of things and and to be as you know appreciative as we can to anybody in town, whether it's Rebecca or Dari or anybody who helps us because mm -hmm. you know they're terribly overworked and I don't think they get a lot of thank yous. Yeah, I, I thank both of them on a regular basis and I really appreciate the fact that you set the tone in these meetings, Gordon, because I agree with you. I think it's a problem with the select board that the town is run largely by volunteers and that there's not more appreciation to the people who come before them. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've raised that point with me in the past, Marilyn. I think it's, I think it's a good one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think that, you know, it, 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 it weighs heavy on the culture of the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, people feel about coming to work in the morning, I think. At the same time, I'm aware that they're they're under a lot of stress right now with all that's happened with the budget and the town administrators, and you know it's it's been a very tough situation. So I, I do understand that they're glum, but <laughs> there, there's also a matter of leadership. So our little part is that we can be grateful. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and pleasant. That's always nice too. And pleasant yeah, and professional. Exactly. Yeah. yeah.
this felt like a really good meeting, by the way. Thank you all. It, you know, it was partly that it was simple situations, but um, it just felt like it flowed well. And um, I appreciate the way we're doing this together. So I have covered everything on my agenda. We need to approve the minutes um, from our want, last meeting. Meryl, did you want to raise the question of that revised application or should we revise it one more oh, time? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. um, so Gordon has worked on creating a new application um, and he and I spoke a little bit about it earlier. Do you want to put it up on screen, Gordon? Uh, I don't think that's possible right now, <laughs> technically oh, <okay>. speaking. <laughs> All right. Basically, um, I tried to take the old application and put it in a format where it would encourage people to complete the whole application, encourage people to submit their documents in PDF, and encourage people when having a drawing to show the existing conditions here, and then the new proposal either here or here, so that when they're up on the screen, we can just look at them and understand what the differences are. Merrill had some very good suggestions about kind of... Um, making the arrangement of the paragraphs of our new application somewhat more intuitive and easier to follow. So I thought I would revise the application based on Merrill's suggestions. Then maybe we can share it with you guys. And then if it's okay with you, Merrill could then submit it to the town um, and they could include that on the website as opposed to what's there now. Because what's there now is kind of, is, is confusing and results in us receiving all sorts of scattered emails with a couple of photographs here something else is in word format there's an occasional pdf and it's terribly onerous to sort through the email account and try to find these things and get them together it tonight was actually fairly easy it took me about an hour and 10 minutes to download things and get them onto my screen last time it took me like two and a half hours and we were missing drawings hmm. yeah yeah it should be an easier process than that but we, yeah. should have, we should have administrative support to do that. But if we're going to do it, we should try to make it as easy for ourselves as we can. Yeah, sounds smart. Oh, that, you know, so so thank you, Gordon, for that explanation. Um, is that okay with everybody to have the two of us work on revising it and then talk about it next meeting? That's fine. Sounds great. Great. All right. Um, I guess, as you mentioned, we should have a secretary. <laughs> We do have the option to apply for a new secretary because there will be another town meeting. Um, and um, the deadline I believe is October 1st. I did talk to Jennifer Congle and Rebecca Eldridge about this and they both discouraged me from doing this, unfortunately. They said, because of the problems with the budget is highly unlikely that we would get any money to get a secretary. Um, but I wonder if we might like to just try if if we applied uh, and for this town meeting, uh, maybe they would say no, and then they'd say yes at the next town meeting. <laughs> um, and it could be that we could just get some, I would, would hope, maybe we could just get some hours from some of the existing secretaries or, or you know, Rebecca, who's sort of our contact person for her to at least run the Zoom meeting and do the work that um, Gordon does to prepare for the Zoom meeting, which would be major progress all by itself. Yeah, um, it's it, Casey, I have to say, was startled to learn that we did not have any sort of administrative or town support in any way. She had no idea, and she was really surprised by it. Um, not that she's going to write this like scathing article or anything like that, but but she just assumed that we had we were a bona fide commission that was supported appropriately. Yeah. Well, we should be. And there was, um, as I talked to Maria um, Burks about this um, a while ago, and she said that I guess there was an application made, there was money allocated, and then the previous town administrator never hired anybody and never made use of the money. And so the money is not available to us any longer because that was a few years ago. If, if we were to go ahead and apply for this, even though the likelihood of approval is not good, would we be perceived as antagonistic given what's going on in the town and the priorities i'm just asking because i think part of what our mission has to be is to be perceived as team players and not yeah. antagonistic well maybe i sh uh, I, I don't know frankly mm -hmm. um 
we could investigate that further and find out. Is is that something that you'd be open to doing, Gordon? Since this would largely save you. <laughs> yeah, I can. I mean, I can talk to Rebecca about it, and then and I'll just like talk it through and explain Great. to her, and really just kind of like strategize about how we can do it in such a way that we're not coming off as being, you know, spoiled brats about it. Oh, hello. Someone's <laughs> joined us. Oh, hey. It's nice to have another female member. Yes, it is. Hello. Um. I think yeah, I'll, I'll talk. I'll, I'll send Rebecca a note, and I, maybe I'll even talk to Helen. I mean, I'll see what I can. I'll noodle around and see what I can find Thank out. Thank you. I really yeah, I would, appreciate. I yeah. would think that the if if it's really a matter of we're not going to get some new person in. They're not going to hire some new person just to be our secretary. So it would be a matter of are the people in town hall? Do they have any time at all to do something like this, or this would just be the straw that broke the camel's back? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so I that's part of what what the issue would be. I think, I think they're grossly, exactly right. they're really understaffed. I mean, I think they're really, really stressed. It's really yeah. hard. It's just one more. Not thing a good time. No. But I do think that we should go on record yeah. with maybe with Helen, maybe with Ryan, mm -hmm. maybe with Rebecca as saying we recognize that everybody is overtaxed right now at the town and that everybody's stressed out and that there's no money, but we just want to be really clear that as volunteers, we're doing a tremendous amount of work that, you know, would normally be something that an administrative assistant would support us in doing yeah. so that our time would be freer to go visit sites and, and, and work with, and work with homeowners. Um, and that it's it would be uh, perfectly reasonable in other circumstances to expect that each, each commission member would receive a packet a week before the meeting so that we could consider the organized packet and visit the sites so that we could do our job better. And right now we're doing that, but it really is something that needs to be farmed out to an administrative assistant. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's wonderful. All right. Um, so any other... Um, issues in addition to the minutes that we need to talk about. Okay. Um, Jim sent around the minutes um, a while ago. Um, shall we go ahead and vote on them? Has anybody the read them? Do we want to put them up on the screen? I can't put them up on the screen, but uh... I'm sorry, I didn't plan for that. Okay. I read them and I'm good with them. I move that they be approved. Okay. I <laughs> read you. them and I'm good with them too. So I can second your motion. Okay. All right. I vote aye. Gordon, aye. Susan, aye. Luke, aye. Jim, aye. All right. Thank you all. And we can end our meeting now. Great, Great to see you all. Nice to see everybody and everybody plus one too. Yes. <laughs> Um, and um, I'll see you in a month. And um, Matt Gash will join us because he just got sworn in yesterday. Fantastic. Wonderful. And Evelyn should be back with us as well. Lovely. And Great. then and we'll have I, a full commission. And Friday at nine o'clock, I'm going to go look at what the aggers are doing. Yes. And I, I'm going to try and join you. I'm okay. going to try and meet you there because I'm interested Susan, in that bar. They're that pretty bar okay. Me. They're pretty okay. And in other houses they've owned, they've taken their windows out, had them stripped, had the lead removed and installed the original windows back in. Which is fantastic. The family has done that with other projects that they've owned and they're pretty good. And, and I feel like going there is more of a PR mission than it is anything else. It's, mm -hmm. it's like a bridge building kind of thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. Okay. Plus, that like barn looks like it had potential cool aspects to it. I'd hate to see I it. I know. Down. I'm going to tear that down. I was starting to have one of those feelings. Yeah. That <laughs> have, to have to noodle with these people, but they're they're they've been around forever. They're solid. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. be able to talk to them. Yeah. Okay. All cool. right. Okay. Take care. Okay. Right. Bye. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.